Now, Paul Burrow, widely regarded as Diana's rock in her final years, has also taken the crown to task over its host of factual inaccuracies, and he joins me live now. Paul, look, I wanted to watch the whole thing before commenting on it, OK? Because I wanted to be fair to the crown. And we've got Robert Lacey on tomorrow night, who will be here to defend the crown. But, Paul, I have to be honest, I knew it was going to be bad. I didn't know it was going to be this bad. I mean, the portrayal of the Queen is just something else. I mean, it's it's vile. But I want to stick to talking about Diana with you because you know the truth about what happened. And there's a particular instance where Prince Charles and Princess Diana reunite. And by all accounts, the reunion at Kensington Palace was actually positive and mature. And the Crown have turned it into an awful dispute between former husband and wife. I mean, there's so many factual inaccuracies, aren't there, Paul? Well, I think this this whole series is distasteful, cruel and inaccurate. Um, you know, Dan, I was there for 21 years. I stood beside the Queen for 11 and Diana for 10. And these are my years, the years which I witnessed. And I'm finding it very difficult to, to find anything truthful in this series. I mean, it, it's altering people's perception towards the royal family and uh, the princess particularly. You know, I've watched every episode and in the final episode, you will see Princess Diana voting to abolish the monarchy on a, in a national debate with Trevor MacDonald and pressing the no, I abolish the monarchy button uh, all day long through her apartments. That did not happen. Mm. Why would a woman who loved being a royal. She was very proud of being a member of the royal family, proud of her sons being members of the royal family, proud that her son would one day be king. Why would she want to tear down that institution? It doesn't make any sense. That is not true. That is not who Diana was. Diana was a very keen supporter of the royal family. And in fact, the queen, she's portrayed as a cold, hard woman. Yeah. No, she wasn't. She was, yeah. I, I was with her for 11 years. She was a warm, soft, kind, generous Christian woman who took a great interest in her family's affairs and, in fact, all the servants that surrounded her, she took care of. And as for the Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, don't get me started. She looks like a, an EastEnders extra that's been dragged through the hedge backwards. <laughs> Where did they do their research on the characters of these three iconic women? I know, of our I know. And, and, and Paul, tell me if this is true, because if, if you watch the series, you, you seem to think that Diana was just terrified of the Queen and the Queen hated Diana. But you actually no. uh, say that, that Diana used to say, I want to hug my mama in reference yes. to the Queen. Well, the princess wrote me a letter once and she said, I understand what's going on inside the Queen's head. And I just long to hug my mama. I want to be here for her. I want to support her. And incidentally, in The Crown, you never see any of the good works which the princess did. You don't see the landmines campaign. You don't see her tireless work with HIV and AIDS. You don't see any homeless um, activity. Nothing, nothing like that. Nothing in support of the princess. It seems to be that they wanted to portray this lonely, mm. isolated woman d just constantly moaning about her life. There's one scene which got me really, really going was mm. she went to the hospital with Una Tuflo. Joe was dying. And that's the moment the, cr the <coughs> crown say she met Hasnat Khan. Not true. That was not the moment she met Hasnat. But on that scene, she's saying to Una, whose husband is dying. Oh, isn't the doctor dishy? Oh, just oh, look know. at the doctor. Don't you think the doctor... Now, wouldn't As you if. think that Diana would have a little compassion for her friend? whose yeah. husband was dying. Well, she was known Stop as being it. one of the most compassionate women in, in the world. Uh, Paul, there's That's also uh, some really vile stuff about the portrayal of her mental health. I mean, they actually show counselling sessions that she had. But especially, Paul, I thought uh, they portrayed the relationships with her young sons in a very nasty and negative way. In fact, uh, She's she's made out as if she makes her son take sides in the marriage battle and as if Prince William is not supportive of his mother. Now, again, you know how close they were, Paul. Yes. Uh, is okay. that an accurate reflection of it's what happened? It's, it's not true. Diana, the most the two most important people in her life were her boys and she adored her boys. But you know what she did? She gave them up so unselfishly 
to the royal family, she said to me, well, they belong to the family, don't they? They need to learn the ropes of their future lives. They need to be with their grandmother and they need to be with their cousins and everyone else. And I understand that. She's like, at least I can have them two weeks a year to take them on holiday in the summer. That's how unselfish she was. And she yeah. had a great relationship with both her boys. And, you know, it, this is a, a cruel um, portrayal of Princess Diana's character. Okay. Just, well, I agree, Paul. It. I agree with all of that. But this brings me now to the point that I'm very angry about, and it is to do with Harry's relationship with Netflix. Because you just know, Paul, if this was any other media organisation, Harry would be issuing statements on behalf of Archwell. He'd be saying that this is sullying his mother's memory. He'd be speed dialing his lawyers at shillings. Instead, what do we have from Harry? a complete, complicit silence because Netflix is about to launch his own reality series on the back of the crown. He's letting his mother's memory down, is he not, Paul? He's got, he's got into bed with the devil, hasn't he? He's, yeah. He really has. He's commercialised himself to the hilt and he should give the money back and say, actually, I don't want to do this more. On principle, say, please don't do this. Cancel the series. I believe this series should have been cancelled at the end mm -hmm. of series four. We are now in living memory of iconic people whom we love and we do not want to see them portrayed like this. So I do not want to watch the next series of The Crown, which includes The Crash. It will be even worse than this one. So, Harry, step up. Step up and say what you feel and think. Goodness knows, though, what's coming in his book because... I know. There is a Pandora's box which could really have massive implications on not only his brother, but his father's new monarchy.